We are Siouxland Proud. This is KCAU 9 News at 10. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Travis Chen. A fire in North Sioux City, South Dakota earlier today has claimed the life of three people. It's our top story at 10. At 7 a.m. this morning, North Sioux City Fire, paramedics and police, along with Sergeant Bluff Fire and Union County Emergency Management, were alerted of a residential fire at 7 Bancroft Court in North Sioux City. Upon arrival, fire units noted the residents to be fully engulfed in the fire. At 9 a.m., three deceased individuals were found in the home. The fire marshal has confirmed the cause to be a propane explosion. They pop up from time to time. I mean, with uh, modern technology and construction of homes getting better, they don't happen as much as they used to, but it does happen every now and then. Officials are asking the public to stay away from the area as it is currently being investigated. Well, Sioux City had a rainy couple of days, but it cleared up just in time for the start of the farmer's market. The first day of the farmer's market kicked off this morning with 41 vendors and live music. And whether rain or shine, the vendors were ready to get back to selling to the folks of Siouxland. Everyone is so great to, they want to be involved with the market and um, they're excited for it to start. I was even getting calls even this morning with people asking if we were open for sure. So it's been awesome. We've got a nice selection of different vegetables here and uh, a few different planter pots, uh, flower pots, stuff like that. And we've got nice weather, the sun is shining, can't ask for more early in May. The farmer's market will open every Wednesday and Saturday from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. until October 26th. Well, it's May the 4th and coincidentally, this year's Star Wars Day landed on the same day as Free Comic Book Day. Acme Comics and Collectibles gave out thousands of free comics this afternoon for the annual celebration. This was the 24th year Acme Comics has participated in Free Comic Book Day. And it's more than a love for superheroes that inspires Acme to share their books. The first time we did this, I saw a little kid get on the floor with a Superman costume and reading the book for the first time. I thought, this is it. This is the reason we do this. This is, I want kids to start to read. I want adults to start reading again. I mean, we've got so much, everybody's on their phones, everybody's doing their, uh, on the computer. Let's pick up a book and read. The event included appearances by Iron Man, the Sioux City Ghostbusters, and more. Well, Sioux City's historic 4th Street was the place to be for good fun and some not so good golf today. Rivercade's Bar Stool Open and Mini Golf Pub Crawl teed off this afternoon with 18 bars participating. Teams of four made their way around Sioux City Pubs, showing off their putting skills. This was the 17th year Rivercade has hosted the Bar Stool Open, and since day one, the goal has been for people to just have fun. Unique fun. You know, my son and I were sitting up at my house about 18 years ago and thought, what can we create that's new in Sioux City? Because Rivercade, we create fun. So we came up with the idea of a pub crawl, mini golf pub crawl, and here we are 17 years later. Well, after an afternoon of golf, the putta palooza after party was held at the Firehouse Bar. It's probably still going on, so if you want to head up there, go, go have some fun. Well, it was a rainy day today in central Iowa, but that didn't stop people from coming out for the Kites on the Green Festival in Johnston this afternoon. There are all kinds of kites on display, as well as stunt, fighting, racing, and show kites. There are also free kite kits for people who didn't have their own to bring. The mayor of Johnson said the festival was inspired by a similar event from her childhood in Sac City. She says it's a great way to bring in spring and put a smile on people's faces. Well, everybody love, loves kites. You know, kites are the oldest uh, toy in the world. Every culture has flown kites, and so, you know, whether you're young, whether you're older, you know, regardless of what your ability, you know, everybody loves, loves to fly kites, and, and even if you don't fly them, I mean, you're just watching the kites fly brings a smile on your face. There weren't just kites for people to enjoy. There were performances by stunt teams, a music show, and a magic show. Well, the Republican Party of Iowa hosted its 2024 state convention today in Clive. A large crowd gathered at the Horizon Event Center to listen to elected officials from the Iowa GOP. Governor Reynolds and Attorney General Brenna Byrd rallied the crowd in the morning, encouraging supporters to get out and vote in November, while touting legislative victories at the Iowa State House. We have banned CRT, got porn out of library 
libraries and classrooms. You know why we are electing Republicans? You know why I have confidence in this next election? It is because Republicans get things done. GOP Party Chair Jeff Kaufman, Lieutenant Governor Adam Gregg, Secretary of Egg Mike Nag, Congresswoman Marionette Miller Meeks, and Ashley Henson, along with Congressman Zach Nunn, spoke in person, with both Senators Chuck Grassley and Joni Ernst sending along recorded messages. Well, students at Dakota Wesleyan University in Mitchell, South Dakota, did a first of its kind course at the school. The economics class partnered with the South Dakota Secretary of State's office and local Mitchell professionals to better understand the economy in the Mitchell area. Reporter Julia Lynn has more. Students in Dakota Wesleyan University's Principal of Macroeconomics course have spent the past few months creating a 66-page report on Mitchell's economy. It's a way to get buy-in from students so that they're understanding that they do actually have an impact. Morgan Edelman, a junior at DWU, spent the past semester researching Mitchell's income expenses, cost of living, and commute time. One thing that I found, like our group found in our income portion was in 2020, actually those who earned less than a high school degree were making more than those who had some college experience. Edelman is studying accounting and says this class helped her gain real-world experience while pursuing her degree. I was super excited to be able to do a hands-on project like this. It just helps you learn everything and just be able to apply those concepts you learn in class that much better. Quinton Walls, a freshman at DWU, is also studying accounting and looks forward to people reading the report. So being able to hope that um, the Mitchell community and even the people in South Dakota will be able to understand the information is like the most exciting for me, how well it actually worked the project. Mike Lordson, the CEO of Mitchell Area Development Corporation and Chamber, says he'll use this data to help grow the economy. It'll be so much fun to track all of this data for the next 10 years and see what did actually make a difference or maybe something that we implemented as a city didn't have the impact that we wanted to, and we'll have that data in the reports to be able to show that. Well, FEMA will begin canvassing neighborhoods in Nebraska affected by recent tornadoes starting tomorrow, May 5th. This is in coordination with the state and county emergency management. FEMA Disaster Survivor Assistance, or DSA, will be visiting Douglas and Washington counties in Nebraska. DSA personnel visit communities designated as federal disaster areas to help homeowners and renters apply with FEMA to address needs from the storms. Well, those storms were just a little over a week ago. Everybody's kind of starting to clean up. Now, it looks like we may have a chance of more severe weather to start the week. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. unfortunately, more <laughs> severe weather is in the forecast, although we've had some drier, calmer weather for those that are still cleaning up from those storms. And Continuing with a quiet night out there on the Ho-Chunk Center camera, did see a high temperature of 64 degrees in Sioux City, four degrees below that average high and that low, just a couple degrees above actually at 46. And we now sit at 51 with clear skies and a humidity at 77%. No wind out there right now, so very calm out across Siouxland. And See this high pressure that has slid into the area that's keeping us cloud free through pretty much all of the region, all that upper Midwest here, cloud free as we watch our next system on the way for Monday. Slight risk for severe weather from Sioux City to the west through all of northeast Nebraska, including Bloomfield, the Wayne area up into Vermilion and Yankton as well. So definitely a chance for some severe weather, some scattered severe storms not out of the question Monday afternoon into the evening and marginal risk as you travel further to the north and east through Siouxland, including Spencer area up into Plymouth and Sioux counties out into Cherokee County as well and Ida Grove, Denison areas also under the threat of maybe an isolated severe storm or two and as we time that out on our storm cast you can see some scattered storms starting to develop through Tuesday morning and afternoon. Those push through the area and we get another batch through our afternoon into the evening. This is when we watch for, we're watching for that more significant severe threat through Siouxland as we get these kind of singular cells popping up, individually some supercellular structured storms there before they really start to congeal into more of a line as they push further to the east. We do see those clear out through our 
evening and early overnight hours and getting clearing back in into our Tuesday. A better day for Tuesday in the wake of the storms, although high winds, tornadoes, large hail, all a possibility. So all modes of severe weather possible, including some flooding, not out of the question it has some heavy rainfall possible, but right now temperatures calm and, or temperatures cool and we remain calm 51 degrees in Sea City. 40s out to the west, including Wayne at 48, 47 there in Norfolk and 49 in Bloomfield. 46, the coolest temperature out there in Vermilion and up in Sheldon. Some upper 40s also there towards Esterville. Those winds rather calm for us out there too. For tonight, 42 degrees. We see those temperatures only drop into those um, low 40s, upper 30s, and some of those more outlying areas as they remain mostly clear and quiet. Those winds north, northwesterly between 5 and 10 miles an hour. And then we do see those pick up for tomorrow between 5 and 15 miles an hour, shifting to the south, southeast, gusting to 20 miles an hour, but plenty of sunshine temperatures into those upper 60s for our Cinco de Mayo. However, it might have to contend with some allergies, very high allergy levels through the next four days. That does include that tree pollen and that grass pollen. So if you're one of those allergy sufferers, as I am, definitely be sure you're taking that allergy medicine. But we do see the showers and storms move through Monday. Daily shower and storm changes through the nine on nine, although very scattered in nature at this point. Something we'll continue to keep an eye on, but really eyeing that um, Monday storm system right now. And then those temperatures fall into the end of the work week before we see temperatures rise once again back into those low 70s. Plenty of sunshine heading into next weekend. So we have an unsettled week before we get to a very pleasant weekend next weekend, similar to what we've seen <laughs> this past week. It'd be nice to start the week without severe in the weather forecast. Well, it's looking that way for next week. <laughs> oh, well, we have, so we'll get through the next week. We'll there's go that. to the next week. We'll be all right. All right. Well, thanks, Maggie. Well, a member of the South Dakota National Guard is being honored for a program he started in high school to send care packages to soldiers overseas. Hear from him and some of the soldiers who received those care packages after the break. You're watching KCAU 9 News. This is KCAU 9 News at 10.